lot of questions and then pretty much she probably can answer it you know, right down the line. Um, so, uh, how do you feel about the fans coming up to you at the show? Uh, you know, and then coming to you guys and saying you know, how much you like the banana splits and asking you weird stuff about it, I'm sure. I mean, what, what's your reaction? You can with you. Well, this is the first exposure I've had in 50 years to this. Uh, I'm enjoying this crowd very much. Thank you. Um, I am hearing story after story about how we helped the childhoods be happy. And I can't beat that. And I find it very moving. People will tell me, my God, every, every Saturday we were with you and we see it. You know, it's interesting because as actors, you do a job of work, you love doing it, and I love these guys, and we had a wonderful time together. And then, of course, it went away and you do other things, and you never realize sometimes the effect it has on people. And one of the nice things of meeting people here is to realize how much it meant to them. And and that means a lot of, and some people are actually moved to tears, and that moves me to tears. But we, we love it. I'm here just for the money. <laughs> That's what I, I don't care about anybody. <laughs> you mean there's, there's money involved? I didn't know that. <laughs> no, you're not getting your cut. No, no, no. Anyway, yeah, we'll love it. You they always punish the elephant. Let's do it again. That's right. You didn't have any dialogue either in the day. That's right. You need to stand up for yourself. Oh, yeah, but if, if I stand up, I'll still be a solid. He is standing up. Yes. Okay. So, Terrence, so we'll start with you and then we can go back this way. How did you get the role of portraying your character in costume for the show? Do you remember? Um, we flew to uh, California from Chicago. Jeff flew from New York, I'm not sure. And we went to uh, Hanna-Barbera, and they said, yeah, these suits are across the street at Ruth St. Dennis Dance Studio. And we walked over there, and there they were in a pile, and who I think still in their big plastic bags. And uh, the, the tall one fit Drooper, the medium-sized one fit me, and the green one, because my older brother is more colorblind than this one, they're both terribly colorblind, but Jeff was really colorblind, and I wasn't, so I got the orange shirt. That's pretty much what it came down to, and Drooper was the tallest. Yes. And in my case, uh, this was another thing. I was doing a, a musical show in Los Angeles at the time. You're a good man, Charlie Brown, and playing Snoopy. And Mr. Barbera, excellent. <laughs> and Mr. Barbera saw me in the show, thought I could move well, and said, we have this show we're about to do, and you'd be an elephant in it. And I said, that's not a big deal. No, no, it's a little elephant. So can you come to the studio? I went the next day. And I was too tall for the costume. <laughs> Only time in my life I've been too tall for anything. So I went back to my show, and two weeks later I got a call. We're having a little trouble animating this costume. We're willing to stretch it out a little feature, and that's how I got to do it. for two years. Never forget it. So is it true uh, that the, well, the show was based on or influenced deeply by Roman and Martin's Lantern, which was on at the time, would you say? I would say it's obvious. We had a joke wall, and Roman and Martin had that first. Uh, we were also influenced by the monkeys. Uh, right. We were doing music videos. Roman and Martin didn't do that. Um, you steal from everybody. I stole from Jack Benny. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, I mean, also, I mean, whoever came up with the brainstorm idea of this was like the monkeys were popular, 
Roman and Mark was, oh, I, was, I say Roman and Mark because it was that variety show thing. Laughing. Yeah, laughing. And, and there was a lot of that going on. So Superman and Lethal Weapon series director, Richard Donner, um, a lot of people might know that name. Um, he directed the early episodes, or well, the first season, primarily the first season, of the Banana Splits. So, what can you tell me? Do you have any recollection? What did he do? Just a rep? I mean, you know. Well, he was very amazing. He would say, uh, make a lot of noise, boys. Run around a lot, make a lot of noise. Don't fall down. Don't fall down. Don't, don't fall down. Fall down. Whatever, whatever. If you fall down, be safe. Yeah, but make a lot of noise. Like, uh, it made any difference? You know, everything we did, the sound, uh, the voices were, were recorded in advance. We just tried to move our mouths in sync with the pre recordings. And I had a hog. <laughs> Years later, I ran into uh, Donner at uh, some studio lot and I had a chance to remind him that I'd been in a suit. And he laughed again. He said, he, said, he loved the laugh. Nice guy. There was a lot of, what are you going to do this time, boy? <laughs> you, you don't know? No. There was a lot of stuff all around the subject vaguely. Uh, written into the scripts, like, Bingo looks alarmed. Well, this is Bingo's expression. <laughs> Good luck with the look and alarm. See, fun with Bingo. You just you act with your arms. Arm acting. <laughs> My girl is <looks> sad. <laughs> Some segments were filmed in uh, Six Flags in Texas and the Comeon theme park, the music theme park in Ohio. So uh, there's footage in the show. You guys like riding like water balloons and maybe like roller coaster dive rides. So how was it when you can't really see, how do you see all these things? Like when you wore the costume, like, so you're riding like maybe a small roller coaster, but you can't really tell what's going on. What do you mean see? Yeah. You can't see? That it, 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 it. Seeing didn't matter in the roller coaster. It, it, you lean back and hope that you wouldn't puke. You know, it was 100 degrees and 98% humidity, and you just uh, hope for the best. And, you know, we're all here, so we survived. And in this, co in this costume, I saw it from here. So not up here, and it was very difficult. So it was like a woolly mammoth. You had all this wool in front of your face, and there was no way to. To be fair, the the costumes that we used on stage uh, with the articulated mouths mm -hmm. uh, were different from the costumes we used at uh, the theme parks. Mm -hmm. Those were the head just sat there. You couldn't make the mouth move at all. Uh, thank God, it was still way too heavy. Yes, way too hot. But, you know, it's fun. we got paid. What the heck? <laughs> so the 31 episodes over the two seasons, is that right? I think so. I so counted or something like that. So how did the, I mean, how many did they shoot in the first year, in other words? We shot six weeks, I think, the first okay. year, and about the same the second year. So they kind of yeah. cut them up into whatever wraparounds. Well, for example, there was a thing, I guess, it was a fleetal nail thing, where you bent to the nail or something, and there was a sketch, and they would do a lot of them at the same time. They'd go for, the, as usual in film, you go for the set and what you're doing. So they would do one after the other of those, and eventually cut them into each of the shows. And that's sure. how they did for all of them. Drooper take out the trash. Yeah. One afternoon, the next morning. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. So now, Madam Splits music was screened yeah. by interesting back to industry vets. You got Al Cooper, Barry White, Gene Pitney. Yeah, problem. Yeah. And our person's going to check